everybody. This trip is going to be a little bit of a different one. My brother's been planning a trip to come out to Arizona and Texas with his Jeep for a little while, getting some more badge of honors done. And some of these trails are pretty remote with no cell phone coverage. And I really hate to see him do these trails alone with no other vehicles to assist. Because if something breaks or if he gets stuck, then he just kind of has to wait and hope that somebody else comes along. Then I noticed a problem. So the second time I stopped for gas in the middle of Missouri, I looked. It was leaking. And it wasn't just a slow leak. It was leaking pretty good. So I got online and started looking up places to buy tools to do it and the supplies that I need. There was Walmart, Lowe's, AutoZones, all the next exit up. As I was coming off the exit, I pulled past one of those random oil change shops right off the highway. And uh, they had three bays that were all open and there was a couple guys standing inside and the sign said, auto service and oil change. So I figured, you know what? I don't have the equipment to do this. I have to buy it. I'll just ask them. So I pulled up and before I even got parked, one of the guys was already walking out the truck asking what they could do. He came over, he looked. I explained it to him. He said, yeah, you can do it. So I asked him how much they charge. He said he'd charge me for an hour of labor and supplies. I was like, you know what? Go for it. So about two hours later, I'm back in the truck driving down the road and I will be in Arizona tomorrow night ready to do some trails with my brother's Jeep. since I pushed this truck past empty but the next gas station is in 15 miles. Just a quick update. I made it to the gas station. Yay! I ended up putting 19.2. The previous record was like 18 and three quarter. So technically I probably still had another 10 miles. Maybe 12. So one of my random detours is going to be Horseshoe Bend. And you can tell the rain is thinking about coming back in. So the sun is still behind the clouds, but I'm waiting to see if maybe it'll clear up. It might. It might not. And I'm deciding if I want to go to Sedona for the sunset or the South Rim and try to get a little bit there. I've got two hours to get the south rim. The sun sets in four hours. I've got three hours to get to Sedona. So it's hit or miss. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'll figure something out. Anyway, I'm not getting rained on, so that's great.
As you can see from the video, I uh, did not make it to Sedona last night. That accident was pretty bad. The car went down the ditch, right past the railing. The other car was flipped over. Uh, two care flights, so it was uh, pretty awful. And they had the road closed for quite a bit. But now I am waiting on my brother to get to the trailhead. He does not know I'm coming. And he's about 20 minutes out. So this should be a fun surprise for him. So I've got everything in the truck all hunkered down, padded, and ready to go. Coming in last night, the washboarding was really bad. So today's plan is we're going to do Crown King the back way. So I'll probably go down, hang out at the end here, and uh, wait for my brother to arrive and talk to the guy that's going to be running the trail with us today. Hopefully he's done it before um, and he doesn't balk at uh, our stock-ish vehicles. But we'll see if we can make it. You find all sorts of random people out what here. What the hell are you doing out here? I didn't want you out here alone. and when. When I made that choice, you didn't have anybody confirmed yet. Yeah. So, but we're down a hydraulic steering pump. Yeah, it's leaking. Jason and his trailhawk. Me and my Xterra. The FJ behind us. The three of us are going to make this a slightly better than stock ride. Looks like we got ourselves a donkey jam. A watering hole. Okay. Good. Jason just tried to do my obstacle, got a little turtle, we repositioned, he got turtled again. Ended up on his control arm and his diff on the, uh, the left rear, so I took the bypass, we pulled him up, and he is continuing down the trail. So now we're going to try to get the FJ up. And we were just talking about the next obstacle, the two rocks, is right there, it's right around the corner. So after getting off the mountain last night, all my GoPro batteries are dead. We managed to get up to Sunset Point rest area just for a little bit of a sunset. There was a hole poking through the clouds. It was still kind of neat. This morning, we are up at Schneibly Hill Road. So we're uh, doing that. It's mostly just kind of a dirt road, a little bumpy going through the, the forest. We're taking a couple of the bypass detours out to the edge of the ridge. Just for future reference, there are a billion what look like nice camping spots out here with some pretty incredible views. 
So uh, next time I'm out here, I think I might be camping up here. There were some nice views, uh, better views on the other side of that ridge. So we started Broken Arrow and made it out to some marine rock. I'm going to try to get up onto the end of it. See how this looks. Doesn't look too bad. Get up here. There we go. Anywho, it's already almost four o'clock and I don't want to make it to Globe to visit some friends at 9.30 at night. So I might just call it after this, head back out and then start driving to Globe. But this view is amazing. I really wish I could see more of it, but I just don't have time this trip because we still have a long drive on the other side to get over to Big Bend by tomorrow night. I'm going to take a couple more pictures here and then I think, uh, I think I'm going to start driving to Globe and uh, see some good friends that I haven't seen in a while. So my brother wanted to be at the end of the road this morning by seven, right where the pavement ends. This is right where the pavement ends. But then when we realized that the sun didn't come up until seven, he decided to wait until 7.30 to meet at the end of the road. But uh, it is now almost getting close to eight o'clock and he is not here. So I am all aired down, all secured, all ready to go, waiting on him, um, see if maybe he decided to keep going further down the road or if he's just not left yet unfortunately i have no way to contact him and no way to find out where he's at because there is zero service here so this should be fun playing the waiting game and then deciding do i just keep driving on or do i keep waiting Springs to Pine Canyon. And that was where I took the Subaru last year when I came out here in June and hit the wilderness campsites uh, Pine Canyon 1. It was a little buggy, really windy, really buggy. So I went back out to, was it Nugent Mountain 1? Uh, the very first spot. So those were the couple of washes I crossed. They uh, 
weren't as bad now as they were then. Uh, I've got a problem with that front skid plate again. Uh, the bolts are not holding up to taking impacts because they are the first thing to get hit. They're the lowest hanging items. It's not a very good design. Otherwise, the two bolts on the ends of the plate that I had to re-tap and re-thread, those ones are still in there, but they are half pulled out and bent. Thankfully not sheared, but they are wedged in there and stuck. So they are currently holding the plates together. So when I get home, I'm gonna have to get those out and possibly find a way to retap all four of those holes to the next larger size. So one of the trails I didn't get to do last time I came out here was Lost Mine. And what I heard, the first mile of Lost Mine gets you to a pretty awesome spot. This is about three quarters in, and this is a phenomenal view. The Lost Mine itself goes up some switchbacks that way. If you're feeling extra adventurous, you can climb this ridge and get up on top of that peak. And from what I understand, that is the best view in the park. But I'm not feeling that adventurous today. Uh, I will do these switchbacks and I'll come back a little bit later. Hopefully this cloud has moved out of the way and I get some sunshine on some of these peaks. Since I decided I was done doing the off-roading for this trip when we uh, left Big Bend, I made a bit of a haul uh, that evening driving all the way up just outside of Oklahoma City. One day rest stop, kind of late. Got a couple hours of sleep. And I decided, I keep seeing all these signs for these caves every time I drive through Missouri. So I decided I'd go ahead and check them out, at least a couple of them, to see uh, what all the hype was. I hit Fantastic Caverns, and then I hit Merrimack Cave. Fantastic was just kind of gimmicky. You just you ride on a wagon on a Jeep through like half a mile of trail. The last stop, literally right before the exit door, was about the only thing that was worth anything in that whole cave. One very big cave. And for the same price, you made the Merrimack. And it was much more interesting. Walking down into it, walking next to the, the river that's in there, the history about it, 
it was it was a much better tour for the same cost. And since I was on a caving spree, I decided to go ahead and drive over towards Mammoth Cave Friday night. That way, Saturday morning, I could get a recreation.gov and I could see if there had been any cancellations on the tours. Because that's about the only way to get a tour in Mammoth, unless you're planning it a couple weeks out. It's a very, very popular place, and most of those tours sell out pretty quickly. And I knew going into it that there's a high chance I might not be able to get into the cave. While I was on my way, I decided to pull up the app, and sure enough, there was one available slot on the Grand Tour that uh, had opened up. So I went ahead and grabbed that, so I knew for sure I had a spot. But I couldn't remember when I was out there last time, about 15, 20 years ago, which tour I took. So I figured I might as well do the longest one they've got anyways. That should be covered. As it turns out, it's the same tour. Uh, as soon as we got into that first room, I was like, oh, this looks extremely familiar. I will add that a lot of people get disappointed with Mammoth, including myself. I was a little surprised this morning when I didn't see hardly any formations in there. It was mostly just a cave with passages through rocks that were half collapsed, half not collapsed. And there, there weren't very many cave formations that you'd expect. The whole area is capped with sandstone, which pretty much creates a roof, which keeps the water from getting into the cave, which then keeps it from forming those expected cave formations. But comparing that to the other National Park cave, Carlsbad, Carlsbad takes the cake, hands down. There is no comparison. Well, I made it home, and this is the first time that I have stopped driving this week before it got dark. Before the sun went down, actually. The sun is still very much up. And throughout that whole week, I managed to sleep in the truck all but one night. Chuck and Rhonda would not let me not stay at their house. So I had to take them up on that offer, but otherwise the truck was my home for a week and it uh, worked out pretty well. So I'm going to start unpacking and then get to all of these pictures and videos and and get the, the daily out of the garage so I can get the truck back in the garage. <laughs> 